Hey, if you want to be good at what you do in the outdoors, you need to know how to identify trees by tree buds. I'm going to use my LT Right Genesis to frame them up and teach you a couple lessons on these today. Here's a few little tidbits about tree buds. They're identifying features and each tree has its own unique characteristics with its tree buds, its bark, its leaves, its shape, and any number of different things. Tree buds come out at the end of summer, sometimes a little bit in early fall. So they're there throughout the winter. So they are a very easy thing to utilize to identify trees. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify some of these trees by their tree buds, show you how to do it yourself, and then talk about uses for those particular trees in woodcraft, bushcraft, survival, and things of that nature. This is Fagus grandifolia, American beech tree. The buds on a beech tree look like thorns. Some people say they look like rolled cigars. Uh, they're pretty easy to identify. They're gonna be alternating down the branch of a tree. Beech trees are exceptionally good trees because they have low hanging branches that you can reach from the ground. And because the branches are so low to the ground and there's a lot of alternating branches along the stem, then you can utilize these for trap setups and stuff of that nature rather easily. Primitive traps where you uh, twitch up snares and stuff of that nature and you can carve those out out of these very reachable branches. Quercus alba, scientific name for the white oak. All oak trees have bud clusters at the terminal end of every branch. It's one of the most unique identifying features about these guys. You'll see that there's multiple buds right at the very end. Now, oaks are really good species to know how to identify because that is where I'm gonna squirrel hunt, deer hunt, turkey hunt. If I'm gonna set up traps for a squirrel pole, I'm gonna put it up against a white oak because they're a more desirable species than a red oak. If you look real close on this particular species, the white oak, most people know that white oak leaves are rounded and red oak species are pointed. You'll notice that the bud clusters are more rounded on white oaks and on the red oaks, these are gonna be more pointed. So even in a wintertime situation where there's no leaves that you can utilize to identify because they've all fallen and starting to, to decompose, you can use the bud clusters at the end to identify whether it's a red oak or a white oak. So this is a Tulipifera liriodendron. Uh, most people call this the yellow poplar or soft poplar, uh, tulip poplar. Uh, one of the unique identifying features is that the terminal bud is gonna look like a duck bill. They're not always green like this. Typically they're brown this time of year. Uh, they are alternating down the stem of the tree. And that is one of the easiest ways to identify. Now this particular tree, the tulip poplar, Native American um, individuals would have utilized the bark on these trees to make containers. You can cut the bark on top, cut it on the bottom, and then just slowly peel this off and then you can sew that back up with any type of primitive cordage to make a, any sort of a container, like a basket container or anything of that nature. And they work exceptionally well. Now, just keep in mind, if you're gonna do that type of work, that that will kill the tree. You don't wanna do that uh, if you don't wanna kill a tree. So make sure that you're on private land and it's a tree that you're gonna harvest and have other uses for. Uh, this particular tree right here, this is where I hang my bird feeders on the cabin, as you can tell, because I write from the cabin porch and I love watching the birds while I'm here. These are not tree buds, but let's talk about them since this guy kind of is here. When you get a cluster of pine needles, this is called a fascicle, okay? Let me put this against the knife so you can see it. Fascicles comes in groups of needles. This particular one you'll note has two needles that are curved. You can't really see it here, but they're kind of yellow in tint. This is Pinus virginiana, which is a Virginia pine tree. If you look at Pinus strobus, which is a white pine tree, they're gonna come in groups of five. I don't have any of those trees on this property. The reason that's important is because white pine trees have more sucrose in them, and they're gonna make a better tea when you make your pine needle tea. The reason that's important for survival and bushcraft is that white pine trees, the Pinus strobus, have more sucrose in the needles and the bark. And so if you're gonna make pine needle tea, why not get a white pine? That is the one that has a fascicle with five needles in it to make a better tasting tea. So this is one of the more unique ones in my opinion. So let's get a close up of it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you'll see this terminal bud right here looks like a claw. Some people say it looks like a T-Rex claw. You'll notice also it has alternating and these are very fuzzy. I know you can't feel them, but alternating buds below that before you get to the claw like terminal bud. This is indicative of a pawpaw tree. The reason I like this is because if you come out here and you find these, 
even though the pawpaws are long gone, the animals have already eaten them and all that good stuff, animals will habituate to areas where, hey, they know that fruit and food has been found in the past. So they'll come by trees like this to see if there's any more fruit, even though the season's long gone. So you can find animals passing through here, as well as if you identify this in the winter and you see these, uh, these buds, because you've identified them in the winter, then you know, hey, that's where I'm gonna go next year to try to find me some pawpaws. So here's another one that has a very unique terminal bud. Let's get up close with the blade so you can see it. To me, these terminal buds on this dogwood tree are very unique. I think they kind of look like little umbrellas. This is one of my favorite trees for woodcraft because you can't find much more dense wood than a dogwood in a mixed hardwood forest like this. Maybe a live oak down in Texas, uh, but here in Eastern woodlands, the dogwood tree is going to be one of the most dense woods to make bushcraft mallets and tools and handles and stuff of that nature. Now, I'm not going to cut a dogwood tree just to kill it, but if I notice that one of these trees have been knocked down in a storm or I contact an arborist and I say, hey, if you find any dogwoods, bring them to me and I can utilize that, then I'll make my hammers and mallets and stuff out of that material. That way I don't have to kill a tree just for it. But these buds at the end are gonna be a unique identifying feature that you can determine, hey, that's a dogwood. Obviously, if you see a bunch of walnuts, it's an identifying feature of a walnut tree, but there's another feature of the Juglans variety, and that is walnut trees, if you scrape, and you don't wanna go deep and get into the inner bark, but if you scrape the outer bark, it's always dark chocolate brown just beneath the surface. So this is another another identifying feature of a, this is a black walnut, of a black walnut tree. Walnut trees are exceptional trees for survival in bushcraft. Obviously you can get to the meat of the nut and utilize that for food. You can also utilize this as a great tree. As you can see, there's so many cut walnuts here. This is a great place to do squirrel traps or squirrel hunting or some of that nature. You can also collect the walnut holes and use those as a stain. I've used those on leather projects for years now. And also in a pinch, in a long-term off-grid situation, uh, you can utilize the oils that are in walnut holes as a wound cleanser. They're very similar in chemical characteristics as iodine. And so you need to study on that. That's not what this video is about, but look that up and study on that subject so you know how to extract that and utilize that for survival and bushcraft. Craig Cottle for LT Wright Knives this time, looking at some fantastic ways to identify trees in a wintertime situation where you don't have any leaves. Hope you've enjoyed it. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.